Oh, friends, welcome to Village Idiots for Christ, or Nuts for Jesus and Just Plain Nuts. It's Monday, it's Job, uh, in his own words, part three, but I want to give you a bonus today out of Joel, because of something that happened to me, and uh, and we'll talk about this for no, no more, hopefully, than five minutes, then we're jumping right back into Job. Uh, Joel 2, um, that's Old Testament, J-O-L, J-O-E-L, Joel 2. Uh, verses 28 through 32. And afterwards, I will pour up my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in heaven and, and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, and the, as the Lord has said, among the survivors who call, who whom the Lord, among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Amen. I had a really terrible dream today, and I don't claim to be a prophet or anything. Is this how I know that I'm an old man? <laughs> right here it says, uh, uh, "Your your old men will dream dreams." Had a really terrible dream today, and again I don't want to get into the dream, but um, don't discount. If you're if, uh, in this hour, and we all, we all believe this is the season, Jesus rebuked his own generation for not understanding their own season. And Israel's back in their place was as a fulfillment of what Christ said about the fig tree. And, I mean, it's supernatural that Israel was reborn in AD 7, um, I mean, 1948. So everything seems to be lining up. Uh, it, people seem to be going the way uh, the Bible. They're trying to they're trying to form a one world religion. The Pope and others are trying to form a one world religion, and so there's a lot of apostasy and a lot of foolishness. But if, if you have some, if you're starting to have dreams or see things, don't pray about it. Don't discount it. It has to line up with the scriptures. But the dream I saw today, again, I, I want to advise you. Uh, if you're a husband, you have wi- you have wife you have a wife and some children. If you drive into a Walmart or into a parking lot somewhere, and you see a large group of people that are just milling around, go somewhere else. Be careful in this hour. Um, there are the the Bible says, "Be innocent as doves and wise as serpents." Be wise in this hour. The way you conduct yourself. I'm not talking about subscribing to fear. I'm talking about wisdom. You take care of those wives and children. There's going to be a lot of darkness and a lot of sorrow coming down the road. And I don't claim to be a prophet or any of that kind of stuff. It just I claim to be an old man. I'm 56 years old. I'm old. Or I'm getting there. I mean, in my heart, I'm never going to be old. I'm young at heart, and I'm going to be young at heart till the day I die. But it says, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. Even on my spirit, both men and women, even, even on my servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit. Uh, this this goes for you too, ladies. If you're starting to see things or starting to hear things from the Lord, make sure they line up with the scriptures. The first test is always line up with the scriptures. If it doesn't line up with the scriptures, then it's not of God. But um, this is an hour to be cautious. God is pouring out his. This started at the day of this started the day of Pentecost two thousand years ago, but it hasn't ended. And people think, oh well, they, you know, every all that stuff died with the last apostles. Nonsense. Nonsense. The Word of God stands forever, and this is in the Word of God, and it applies to our generation as well as it did 2,000 years ago to the days of the apostles. So again, be wise in this hour. You don't want to find out the hard way um, that um, you should have been more cautious. Again, don't subscribe to any fear, but be cautious. Be wise in the way you conduct yourself. Pray about the way you conduct yourself. Uh, pray about the Lord told a friend of mine is coming a day when he even has to check in with him before he leaves his house. So uh, anarchy, you see this with this stuff going on in Portland and Seattle and Minneapolis and Chicago and other places. Anarchy, this has nothing to do with race. This has. This is not a race problem. This is a grace problem. This is not a skin problem. This is a sin problem. And so, again, there's darkness out there, racism and all of that. I'm not, I'm not commenting on that. But I'm, what I'm saying is this has to do with the heart of men, all men, black, white, green, blue, yellow, and red, all men. This is the heart of men. The Bible says the heart of men is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? The Bible says guard your heart above all things. It's the wellspring of life. 
So keep your heart right, be cautious, and be wise in this hour. That's all I'm saying. So Joel, that was Joel 2. 28 through 32, if you wanted. Those are, that's some beautiful scripture. I don't have time to comment on that. And I need to do Joel. I hadn't even considered it. But anyway, let's just jump into Job. That's just a bonus for today. It happened to me this afternoon when I was sleeping after driving all night. And I just wanted to share that with you. Oh, I got that Diet Pepsi today. Sure need it. Got my Aquafina water. There it is. There's my friend, Aquafina. And, uh, and we're going to jump into Job. We're jumping into Job, um, Job 17, I think. And this is Job again in his own words. All right, Job 17, 11. And Job in his own words here. Uh, probably another week of this. I didn't expect to go four week of Job. But I went through and grabbed, I went through a month ago or whatever it was, three weeks ago. and went through and I got my little phone, like I said, and I've got all the scriptures there. And so I, I'm, get, I'm not giving Job short shrift, as I've said. And uh, I want you to hear Job from himself. I want you to hear his own words as he's trying to understand this terrible, horrible trial he went through, losing all his children, his health, and all of his stuff, and be then being accused by four, three of his friends and one other guy being accused by four men of having sinned when he hadn't. He was blameless. Man, remember um, Job 42.7, he spoke rightly about God. That's the ground rule here. Job spoke rightly about God and he was blameless. God testifies at the end out of his own mouth that Job was blameless. And so, but you want to, you want, you want, because some of us are going to go through some sorrow. Some of us are going to lose some things, a lot of things, maybe everything. And if we got a guy like Job to hold on to, hey, you know, that helps. It helps us to keep getting through. I told you before, my first wife, she was given six months to live in 95 and lived another 16 years, but I told her, start reading Job. So this is important. Job is important. It helps you to deal with your own sorrow. God put a book in there about a guy who had to deal with the loss of everything because God knew, again, some of us were going to lose everything. So let's just jump in and stop talking. Enough of the introduction. Let's jump right on in here and get into Job 17:11. My days have passed, my plans are shattered, and so are the desires of my heart. This guy was brokenhearted. And again, some of you can relate to this. There's a lot of brokenheartedness in this hour, and there's going to be a lot more brokenheartedness. So again, here's a guy. My days have passed, my plans are shattered. You've got plans today, and tomorrow they're shattered. This guy did too. Um, and so are the desires of my heart. These men turn, now that doesn't, let's just stick with 17. And so are the desires of my heart. His plans were shattered and so, and his, and his heart was shattered. The desires of heart were shattered and um, his days have passed away. I mean, he just get heart, um, uh, heart uh, hope, hope deferred makes your heart sick. This guy had hope deferred. He had, he didn't have anything to hope in. You know, he still had God and he talks about this in here. But man, you lose everything. And, and you know, all the trivial matters, the trivial pursuit and trivial matters go away when you lose everything. And Job experienced the loss of everything. Verse, uh, chapter 19, verse 4. Um, it, um, <laughs> uh, I love this. If it is, this is 19, verse 4. If it is true that I've gone astray, my error remains. My concern alone. There's another scripture I think I covered in here where Job says, I, until I die, I will not admit you're right. You know, there's a lot of busybodies in the, uh, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ who want to tell other people how to live. And you know what? We need to back away from that kind of stuff. We're all, you know, you see somebody hurting like Job's friends. Again, they thought he was an error. If they thought he had gone astray. If it is true that I've gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. You know what? If people, even if people are in error, have gone astray, don't go, don't go just attacking them. You know, you go up to people, you make sure they know you love them. Make sure you know you're there. They know you're there for them. Be a friend, but don't be a friend who has to always correct. You know, someone sees you coming and they turn around and go the other way, uh, and and you're you're one of their friends. Then you know that they're tired, probably tired of being corrected by you. You know, even if you're right about some things, even if you're trying to share repentance with people, even with, even with telling people about repentance and coming to the Lord, you know, hey, I want to share Jesus with you. 
even in sharing Christ with other people, you have to be careful in that. You know, some people have you know been through bad religious experiences or gone to bad churches with bad pastors who all they've done is condemn them. You got to be careful how you share the truth with people and um, and and try to help them out. So his friends thought they were helping him. His friends thought, hey, I'm telling Job to repent. Yay. I want Job to be okay with God. I don't want Job to die in all the sin he's in. They, they, were, they re- honestly thought that they were doing Job a service, and they weren't. And so um, remember this when you're trying to help people. Amen. Uh, Job 19, 19, and uh, Job chapter 19, verses 19 and 20. Uh, there's, again, there's a lot of heavy stuff we're dealing with here, but I want you to hear Job's heart because you may be going through some of this stuff and your heart may be broken too. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones and I have escaped with only the skin of my teeth. You've heard that, the skin of your teeth, skin and bones. A lot of uh, colloquialisms, uh, a lot of famous sayings come right out of the Bible. And here's one, the skin of my teeth and I have nothing. And I am nothing but skin and bones. Man, when that staph infection, whatever those boils were that came upon him, and like I said, my first wife, that was part of her demise was a staph infection, which messed up her kidneys. She only had one boil about the size of a quarter on her back. Um, And this guy was covered with this stuff. And so, again, though, all my intimate friends detest me. Man, isn't that, what a terrible thing. I mean... The people you count on most detest you. It's like, I mean, even his wife, I don't think meant any harm, told him to curse God and die. This guy felt all alone on an island of grief, you know, all alone by himself, detested by his intimate friends. Uh, Those whom I love have turned against me. Man, I, I still get heavy reading these kind of words because you go, wow, man. It's a t- this is, listen, it's a tough old world and it's a tough old life. And some of us are going through worse things than others. And so be merciful to people like Job who are going through, you got friends that are going through this whole Corona thing. This, when the Corona hits you hard, man, people can't smell stuff. Their smell goes away. Their sense of taste goes away. They can't hardly breathe, you know. I mean, a lot of people think this whole Corona thing's a conspiracy theory. It's not. There are actually sick people. I think they've overblown the numbers and all this, like most people think. But but I've heard the testimonies of people who actually got this stuff, and it messes you up. So we live in an hour where people are going through some difficult stuff. And so let's, if we're going to be an intimate friend, let's be an intimate friend. Not just a, let's not be a fair weather friend but an intimate friend who sticks closer than a brother. The Bible talks about a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Let's be a friend like that and not turn against people. And again, I am nothing but skin and bones. I've escaped only with the skin of my teeth. Man, tough days for Job. He was rewarded at the end twice over, but he had to go through this trial. He had to go through every inch of this trial, and it was hard hard that's another thing real too because if christian you got people who say put on a just put on a happy face pretend you know uh if you just confess with your mouth uh you know oh i'm not sick i'm not sick i'm not sick that's a false teaching if you're sick you don't confess you're not sick if you're sick jesus taught us you know you speak to the mountain and say move if you're sick you speak to that sickness and you rebuke it in jesus name but you don't ignore the sickness if you're going through an actual sickness and you say you ain't sick then you're lying No, if you have a sickness, you speak to that mountain of sickness and you command it to go in Jesus' name. You pray against it. But if you ignore it, you're never going to deal with it. You've got to deal with what's in front of you. It is not faith to say you don't have a mountain in your life. That's foolishness. If you have a mountain in your life, you speak against that mountain. You pray against that mountain. You ask God to deliver you from that mountain, but you don't ignore the mountain. That's not faith. That's folly. Don't ignore the problems in your life. Pray against them. Ask the Lord to intervene. Ask your friends to pray for you. But don't say you ain't got no problems. If if you're broke, admit you're broke and ask God to deliver you from being broke and to prosper you and to get you through this. Be real. Be real. Have some common sense. I'm not putting you down. I'm not beating you up. But if you're going through stuff, don't ignore it. Pray about it. Ask God to help you with it. Ask your friends to pray for you. But don't ignore your problems thinking that's faith. It's not faith. 
uh, verse, let's see, 19. Oh, then we're right there. Oh, this is weird. I got 19, 19 and 20, 21, 22, and 23 and 24. I forgot that I'd done this at 25 through 27. Holy macro, I got four right here. All right, let's go to 21 and 22. All right. Um, have pity on me, my friends. Have pity for the hand of God has struck me. Uh, why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Man, again, the guy just wanted a little pity. The guy wanted a little sympathy and empathy. He thought again, he didn't know there was a devil. He didn't have a Bible to read. All he knew about was God. He knew he was blameless and he was going through this terrible try and didn't have any written explanation like the book of Job to read, like we do. We're so blessed. This guy had to live out a trial that he had no understanding of. He thought God had struck him for something. He didn't ever accuse God of evil again, 42.7. He spoke, God says he spoke and rightly about me. But again, he thought God had struck him. He wasn't cursing God. He just didn't know there was a devil. And why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Again, this is the kind of verses people use to accuse Job of evil. Look, he's accusing God of evil. No, he doesn't know there's a devil. If you don't know there's a devil and all you know about is God, you're going to think the trial you're going through is God. You're not accusing God of evil. You're just thinking he's putting you through this trial for some reason when you don't have no understanding. And that's the problem. People sometimes don't have any understanding. They go through stuff, but they're not necessarily in sin. They're just going through a hard trial for some reason, which we don't understand. And that's why, again, sometimes like Job's three friends at the beginning of this book, you know, they, they, they should have just kept their mouths shut because they were in wisdom when they, when they, as soon as they opened their mouths up and tried to explain it, then they were in folly. And so, man, whew. all right, verse 23, 23 and 24. Oh, that my, oh, I love this one. This is good. Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on, on lead or engraved in rock forever. Every time I hear this going down the road, listen to this, I go, done, Job, done. Because he got what he wanted. Oh, that my words were recorded, they were, that they were on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. They are. They're in the Word of God. They are in the rock of the Word forever. These words will never pass away. Job's words. Job got the request of his heart right here. That his words were, and thank God he got this request answered because we would be we would be a poorer we would be poorer people without this book to help us understand our own stuff. So thank you God for answering his prayer and giving him his words recorded. Job's words are recorded forever in the Word of God, and the Word of God never passes away. So praise the Lord that he answered this prayer and that we're blessed because he did. Um, let's see here. We got 25 through 27. Oh, man. Now you're going to see why you, you, know, you can know that Job isn't speaking the evil of God. Watch this. I know that my Redeemer lives. I could stop there. They've written songs. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know da, 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 he gives. They've written songs from this verse. I know that my Redeemer lives and that, and that in the end he will stand upon the, uh, upon the earth. That's Christ's return. After my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes and I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. This guy is such a picture of Jesus himself. This guy saw the big picture. He was trying to understand his trial, but he saw the, this is the big picture right here. I don't want to stop here, and I'm going to try not to stop here. I know that my Redeemer lives. That's Christ. And in the end, he will stand upon the earth. That's his return. He was prophesying about Christ and his return. After my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. We're all going to get a glorified body like Jesus. When he was, when he was resurrected from the dead, he had a glorified physical body. He, time and space meant nothing to him. He could transmute. He could be translated or transmuted from one place to the other. The Bible says in the New Testament again and again that he would just show up where the apostles were. He just, boom, he, he was there. And then there's no, he had a physical, glorified physical body, but no physical limitations whatsoever, even with time and space. And so, I will see God in myself. We're all going to see God in our flesh, glorified physical body, just like Jesus. Yet, uh, yet will, and I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. 
I myself will see him. We're all going to see Jesus Christ. We're all going to see his return. And the whole world, in fact, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's Ephesians, I believe. The whole world is going to see Christ one day. Every human being, all of them are going to see Jesus. They're going to bow their knee. And again, unfortunately, not everybody's going to say, like he says in 27, how my heart yearns within me. Not everybody's heart is yearning, going to yearn within them. The people that are in wickedness and refuse to come to God for salvation, come to, come to Christ, aren't going to yearn for his return. They're going to yearn for him to stay away and not bother them. And unfortunately, he's going to bother them all the way, even into a lake of fire, sad to say. But there you go. He, this guy was prophesying about Jesus Christ. Chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Isn't that awesome? This guy, man, I just, how can you not love this guy? Um, let's just keep going. We, it's only 20 minutes in. Let's keep going. Job 21, verse 10. I want to finish this up next week in his own words. Like I said, yeah, we may get there. I think we might get there. Okay. 20, 21, 21, 3. Let's see what he says over in 21, 3. Is my complaint directed to man? Why should I not be impatient? No, I meant right, 21, 3. Sorry about that. I was reading 21.4. Bear with me while I speak. And after I've spoken, mock, up, mock on. Let me read that again because I was laughing. And Job, Job just got to the point where he's just playing these boys. He said, bear with me while I speak. And after I've spoken, mock on, M-O-C-K, mock on. He just, he got to the point. It's like, look, you're not listening to me. You don't really care about me. All you want to do is accuse me of evil. So, hey, I'm going to speak. Then you can just go ahead and mock me some more, just like you're doing, just like you've been doing. Just keep on mocking. He just got to the point there. He just like he just didn't pay any attention to these two of the idiot friends. And uh, <laughs> I love that. Bear with me while I speak. And after I've spoken, mock on. I, I mean, every time I hear this, I laugh because I'm going, yeah. That's how you got to deal with some people. Just let them mock you. They're going to. Uh, Job 21, verse 34. Let's continue on here. So how can you <laughs> so how can you console me with your nonsense? This is Job 21 34. So how can you console me with your nonsense? Nothing of, is left of your answers but falsehood. Man, Job could see right through these guys. God, Job knew that these guys were exercising only human wisdom and not the Holy Spirit. Job could see right through these guys. They couldn't see their stuff, but Job just just right there, boom. How can you console me with your nonsense? Nothing is left of your answers but falsehood. Everything you're saying about me is a lie. I know I haven't sinned. You're accusing me of sin. So all you're doing is telling me falsehood. All you're doing is telling me lies. I don't want to hear your garbage no more. Shut up. But basically what Job was saying, just shut up. I don't want to hear your junk no more. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> I don't have to go on there. That's, that's simple. That's self-explanatory. Um, 23, 10 through 12. Okay, 23, 10 through 12. We're almost 23 minutes in. I love to get the, right at the bottom, right down, uh, let's see if we can see it, right where my finger is. I got, they have the time there. I love that. Whoever thought that up, that, hey, whoever designed this, uh, this whole thing I'm doing, using here, thank you for putting the clock right down there. It makes this easier. If I had to do a little clock thing, it would, it would distract me. Um, 23, 10 through 12. Let's see. We're going to end here. This is, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> okay. We're going to end here today. We're at 23 and a half minutes in. This is a perfect place to end. I thought the other place would be better, but this is really good too. 23, 10 through 12. Excuse me, my. Oh, man, doggone. Excuse me, guys. Hold on for a second. I just woke up about an hour ago, so yeah, you get that sleeper crap in your eyes. I think I got some of that on me. <laughs> it's like all of a sudden I couldn't see good. <laughs> 23, 10 through 12. But he knows the way I take. This is God and Job. This is Job talking about God. But he knows the way I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his ways without turning aside. I have done not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth, mouth more than my daily bread. Man. 
I love that passage, 10 through 12, verse chapter 23. But God knows the way I take. Can you say that? Can I say that? God knows the way I take. When he has tested me, I'll come with forth his gold. I hope so. When God tests me, I hope I don't ever go through a test like this. But when I'm tested, I hope I come forth as gold. I know you do too. Um, my feet have closely followed steps. I have kept to his ways without turning aside. Man, having a clear conscience between yourself and God, knowing that you're doing the right thing, or at least attempting, your heart's bent towards it. You're not getting it right every day, but you're trying to do the right thing. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept my ways, kept to his ways without turning aside. I love that. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Corey Ten Boom, uh, in a hiding place, the, the her and her sister Becky and their family went to a concentration camp for hiding Jews, a hiding place. Great, great book and great movie. But I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. The Lord enabled her to sneak a Bible, little small, might have been just a New Testament, I'm not sure. But she was able to sneak a Bible into the concentration camp, into the, the barracks where they lived. And they had lice. There was lice. These barracks were full of lice. And all the women had to have their heads shaved and stuff. And they thanked God for the lice because it meant that the, 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 Germans, would, the Germans were terrified of going in those barracks. They would have the women come out, but they would never go in because they didn't want to catch the lice. So they had the lice. And that enabled... Beck, uh, Corey Ten Boom and her sister Becky Ten Boom to have the Bible and testify to these Jews about Christ and some of them accepted Christ but that she, she uh, I have treasured the words of his mouth the Bible, the words of his mouth more than my daily bread again, you know, with Job there wasn't a Bible it was just the words of his mouth the relationship but the words of God's mouth are the word of God as well and she treasured that more than her daily bread isn't that an awesome story? man this guy knew his, what do we get from this? You can know your heart. You can know if you're humble. Moses knew he was humble. Numbers 12, 3. Uh, Moses was the most humble man on the face of the earth. No, Moses wrote that by, at God's command. You can know if you're humble. You can know if your heart's right with God again. But he knows the way I take. When he has tested me, I'll come forth as gold. My feet have closely followed his steps. I have kept to his ways without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. You can know. You can know. Not that you're perfect. Not that you're sinlessly perfect. None of that. None of us are. But you can know if your heart is bent towards God. You know if you can know that your st that the steps you're following are the, are his are his steps. Jesus' steps. You can know these things. He knew. And we can too. And that's the whole point of this. The God wanted this stuff written so we, he, we could see this and we could know whether our steps are his steps. Man, take heart in this. Know your own heart. Check your own heart. Ask yourself, am I on his path? Am I closely following him? I'm not sinlessly perfect, but do I have a repentant heart before him? Am I desiring? Is my, is his, is, are his desires my desires? We can know these things. Job knew and so can we. Let me pray. That's a great place to end. I love that. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your word. As we read it, it helps us to know whether our desires and your desires line up, whether we treasure your word more than our daily bread, Lord. Help us to treasure your word more than our daily bread. Help us to closely follow you, Lord God. And in the end, to see your face, all your children, all your redeemed children through Christ get to see your beautiful face, Father God. Help us to have that as a goal in mind, to see you someday, to stand in your presence, to fall and worship you in your presence, to glorify you, knowing that we have kept your steps, not perfectly. We all sin. We all fall short. We all fall short of your glory. We all have sinned. None of us is righteous, not one, but through Christ, we can be made righteous. We can be justified by faith and we can receive the promise, the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ who was crucified, died and resurrected, who is now the King of Kings and Lord of Lords through simple faith and repentance, you grant us the gift of eternal life. And all of us who are listening to this and reading this can't wait to meet our brother Job someday, who's in heaven with you and glorifying you every day of the week. Again, there's no days of the week up there. It's just one long eternal day. And we long to join Job someday in, our, in his worship of you. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the promise through Jesus Christ and his blood to be with you forever and to treasure your words more than we even treasure our bread. 
Man, we love you. Christ at gmail.com. I am receiving messages. I've had some comments lately. So Village Idiots for Christ at gmail.com. It's all together. Village Idiots for Christ at gmail. If you need anything, want prayer requests, you want to, like today, just doing the going back to Joel. I think I'm going to teach Joel somewhere. I'm going to work Joel and probably I'm going to do Esther and Ruth and Esther and maybe Song of Solomon's. Maybe I'll keep the Monday and we'll be, we'll just be old test, one of the Old Testament days. I've got Wednesdays. I'm doing Isaiah, but Anyway, we love you, and we thank God for you, and we're praying for you. Treasure the words of his mouth more than even your bread. Be blessed.